I invite you to remain seated and please join me in the invocation and confession and forgiveness. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done not. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may like your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable and join in our gathering song. It is the red hymnal, 810, O Jesus, I Have Promised. Verses 1, 3, and 4.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience. And give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from the 15th chapter of Jeremiah. O oh Lord, you know, remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for, for me on my prosecutors, persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O oh Lord God of hosts, I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that, thought, that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Here ends the first reading. Our psalm is Psalm 26, and we will read this responsibly. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the evil. I have hated the company of evildoers, and I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may be in procession around your altar. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I know the house in which you dwell, and the place in which your glory abides. Our second reading is from Romans, the twelfth chapter. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but Take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, 
for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here ends the second reading. I invite you to stand as you are comfortable for the Gospel Alleluia. that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind on not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Growing up, we hear things like, well, he followed in his footsteps. Most of the time they refer to that as their father, or maybe an uncle, or maybe a brother. Or she followed in her mom's footsteps, or her grandmother's, or her sister's. But we take someone and we follow after them, is what is meant by that. And some of these things go on for generations and for generations. In my, I'm trying, I want to make sure I get this right now, because if any of my relatives see this, they'll correct me. <laughs> but when my father came to the home, my great-grandfather came to the homestead in Ashton, he was a farmer. Uh, my grandfather was a farmer. My grandfather raised nine children. And all the men, except for one, were farmers. I was born and raised on a farm. But before I could follow in my father's footsteps and become a farmer, my father went out and became a flooring installer. Now the point to all this is, is that when you're growing up and you're in high school, Whenever you look at what people are doing to make extra money, there are jobs that are just funner than others, okay? Like working at the local drive-in or uh, some type of other popular food place. Or, you know, I always thought it would be neat to work in a bowling alley, which I did for a little while anyway. But in the summertime, you know, dad always wanted me with him. And Let's face it, installing floor covering 
wasn't what was called a cool job. But my father looked at me one day, and as I've often mentioned, he was not a man of uh, a great deal of words. Uh, my ability to speak in front of folks really comes from my mom, not from my dad. But when he said something profound, you never forgot it. And he looked at me one day when I was struggling with whether I was going to sit next to him in that van or whether or not I was going to go do something else. He looked at me and he said, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to learn to do this because I know that if you learn to do this, no matter what happens, you'll always be able to take care of yourself. Well, being full of the power of youth, I didn't really think that was so. But you know, like most fathers, my father was very good to me. And so out of respect for him, I agreed. Years later, I realized that was also a call for help because in that industry, like any other, summers were the busiest and dad didn't have any, I was it. So from the time I was 14, 15 years old, until I graduated from high school, as I've mentioned probably more than once, that was my summer job, my night job, my weekend job, my anytime I needed money job. And for the most part, certain parts of it, I got very confident at. I wouldn't use the word great, but I got very confident at it. And being around my father, I also got very good at creating solutions for problems which later helped me, which later on in life helped me when I moved out of installing and got into more of the wholesale working for manufacturers and distributors because I had lived it, so I knew what I was talking about. Those words come back to me a lot. That was not what I wanted to do. There was often times when I was doing it later on for simply just to keep myself sustained when I didn't want to be doing it. But I look back and I remember the words of my father said, learn to do this and I know you'll be okay. So I did. It's been a long time. And that's been a real big part of my life. Jesus isn't preaching to crowds anymore. He begins to shift his ministry in the gospel to focus strictly on his disciples. To reassure them, to empower them, to give them the wisdom and the strength that he hopes that they'll, they'll actually have. But to understand the great sacrifice that he must undertake. The very purpose why he came. And he was preparing them to go on without him. Learn from me and I won't have to worry about you. Sound familiar? Learn from me. And yet when Jesus explained about the torture, the torment, the sacrifice, the agonizing death, they could only think of what suited them at the time. And Peter, the, the, the apostle on which, the rock on which Christ would build his church, his words thought of himself and said, Lord, I'm worried about you, but in a sense, I'm more worried about me. What will I do without you? He struggled to understand the teachings. He, under, he struggled to understand who Jesus was and what he was there to accomplish. You see, Jesus was the physical fulfillment of a promise made a long, long time ago at a very dark time in human history, and that was the Garden of Eden. He was there to fulfill God's promise of a Savior that would come and sacrifice himself for you, for me, for the world, to set things straight that in a world with little hope, in a world at times of chaos, that we would understand and know his love through his death, his resurrection, and that promise in which we all live, that promise of eternal life. But this purpose and this reasoning eluded the disciples at the time, and all they could think about was their needs right there at that moment. And they didn't want to go down that path. No more than I really wanted to learn how to put in flooring. 
And yet Jesus said, this is my path. And you don't know it now, but this is exactly what you need. You may think it is something that is terrible, that you don't need and that you will not recover from, but yet it is the very thing that will give you life. It is the very thing that will free you. It is the very thing that you will live in from that day forward for the rest of your life, seeking out and changing the lives of others in my name. Peter couldn't get that. So Jesus said, well, if you can't get it, then get behind me. You'll figure it out in the end. And then goes on to say, if one is to follow me, they must drop everything and pick up their cross and follow. Those, are, those words are easy to say. It's far easier to, it's far harder to do it. And more importantly, what does that look like for you and I? What does that look like to throw everything aside and pick up a cross and follow Jesus today? Age old question. There were sermons in the past that I remember they used to come out with an easy button. <laughs> and they'd say, well, we take the easy route because we hit the easy button and we go. Well, today's sermon isn't about the easy button. It's struggling with the tough answers. That question is as personal and individual as a question can get. What does it mean for you and I to put everything else aside or everything else behind and pick up our cross and follow Jesus? And in the end, this sermon won't answer that question for you. That is what you will need to ask yourselves. But I think part of the answer, if not all of it, lies in the words of Paul in Romans. You know, in 1 Corinthians, Paul goes on, which is a, it's a, it's a piece of scripture that is read most often at weddings. He, des he describes what it means to love. But more importantly, he also tells us how powerful love is. That living in the promise of the resurrected Christ, the risen Christ, okay, the most powerful thing that we have in our arsenal here today on earth is our love of God and Christ and one another. And that there is nothing more powerful than that in all the earth. Some would argue, but they ain't going to win because it truly is. And that gift is given to each and every one of us through the love of our God in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our gift. That's our strength. And it's in and through that that we discern what it is and how it is that we pick up our cross and follow Christ. Paul talks of love. He talks of recognizing and facing evil. He talks of honor. He talks of affection. He talks of respect for one another. Just as Jesus' love is what ultimately pushed him to that final sacrifice. Yes, he did so in obedience to his Father. And thanks be to God that he did. But he was also human. And he saw the human condition. He saw the brokenness of humanity and the hopelessness of humanity. And out of pure love, pure love, we all are witnesses because they were there to the greatest act of love that we've ever known on earth. God gave his only son that through him you and I might be saved. The greatest act of love. And that act of love in and through people just like you and me is making a difference yet today. Now we work, we live, we play, we have things that we need to do, but it's in through the love of Christ that we need to do them because in doing so, that's how we impact the world. When we look at the strife and the struggle of our current world right now, is there anything out there that could possibly fix this except for the love of Christ? Pure love, 
looking at one another, respecting, tolerating, listening, and loving. Some would argue it wouldn't make a difference. I would argue otherwise. Because if you truly love one another, if you put yourself out for that individual standing in front of you, the turmoil that we see, the dissension that we see, it all goes away. And that is Satan's biggest fear. That in and through love, that one day we will conquer these things. That in and through our Lord Jesus, they too will go away. And if that be the day he returns, so be it. But until then, we are called to take this great gift of love in small ways, private ways, public ways, big ways, any way we can. Lead and live through the love of Christ. You will have picked up your cross. You will be following Jesus. And you will make a difference. My hope and my prayer is that it be so. Amen. Please stand as you are comfortable. Our hymn of the day is in the red hymnal, 817, You Have Come Down to the Lake Shore. care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Each prayer petition ends with, Lord, in your mercy, and the congregational response, 
is hear our prayer. God of wonder, you bid your people to follow Jesus. Set the mind of your church on divine things. Grant us to trust in you that we lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover joy in life through him. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of community, you call us to rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering and pers persevere in prayer. Make our congregation a worship of love. When we quarrel, bring reconciliation. Help us overcome evil with good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us. Give those who suffer a strong sense of your presence and love. Accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirits of those who are despairing and heal the sick, especially those listed in our bulletin and those on our hearts that we wish to speak aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all grace, you give us everlasting life. In love, we recall your holy ones who now live in your undying light, especially the family of Bob Moser, Jr. Be with his family and friends at this time of their grief and sadness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for all those affected by COVID-19, and at this time, all affected by Hurricane Laura, especially those in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Be with them at this time of loss and suffering, and help provide what they need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated, and I invite you to turn and greet your neighbor from where you are seated.
I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. Please join me in the prayer. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living thing. You have set this speech before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and joy in their unending hymn. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the Lord's faith. All is now ready. All are welcome. Please be seated.
you to stand as you are told. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join in our sending song, Son of God, Eternal Savior.